So in the last video, we introduced the MOSFET gate capacitance. And the reason we call it a gate capacitance and not a gate to body capacitance uh, will hopefully be clear by the end of this video. But the basic idea is that the capacitance actually depends on the state of the channel. So the capacitance depends on the gate voltage that we're applying, VG. Um, and it depends on whether or not we've got a depletion region and whether or not we've got additional charge carriers. So in this video, I'm gonna put back the drain and the source. And again, I'm assuming that these are N plus regions as a P-type body. We've got our oxide with a certain thickness. Uh, this is the body. And in the last video, we said that if we wanted to plot the capacitance as a function of voltage, uh, we said that initially it started off at some some value, C initial, we call it. We didn't say what it was, but we said initially it was constant. Well, why? Why is it constant? Uh, and this is the gate voltage that we apply. And why does it start at this certain value? Well, if we apply a gate voltage, let's say it's minus one volt, then we initially had a depletion region here. So when VG was zero, we had a depletion region here. And I should also make clear that I'm assuming that this, this substrate the body is grounded. And for now, let's apply a drain voltage of zero and a, a source voltage of zero as well. So if we apply a negative gate voltage, we're going to attract these positively charged holes and they're going to destroy, uh, or they're gonna eliminate this depletion region. And so all we're gonna be left with is just a regular P-type body. We're just gonna have holes floating around. And I'm ignoring the depletion region that's formed with these N plus regions for the time being. So we've got holes floating around here, and we know we've got electrons floating around in the middle. So if we've got a negative gate voltage, we're going to attract holes to the very edge. So we're going to attract positive charges to the very edge of the oxide on this side, negative charges to the very edge of the oxide on this side. I guess I should draw them here since that's the metal as well. And these charges are separated by a certain distance. That's the thickness of the oxide. And so the capacitance is just the width of this transistor. So that we call this the width uh, multiplied by the length. So the width times the length, which collectively form the area of the parallel plate capacitance, uh, times the permittivity of oxide divided by the thickness of the oxide. And recall that we call this Cox, and it appears in textbooks and pretty much everywhere as Cox, and it's implicitly a capacitance per unit area. So this is a capacitance per unit area. And notice that this is constant. So, okay, let's make this uh, capacitance per unit area. So capacitance between the gate and the body per unit area. Wow, that's that's ugly. Let's rewrite that. Capacitance between the gate and the body per unit area, and so initially this value C in, uh, let's let's write it as what it actually is. It's actually just C ox. So if we divide both sides by the area again, we're just dividing by W times L, and we get that C per unit area is just equal to C ox. So that's when we apply a negative voltage. So this is say uh, when VG is at minus one volt. And then as we approach zero, uh, and this depletion region starts to form again because the holes are all leaving, as we no longer have that strong negative, that large negative voltage to keep them there. We've got our depletion region reforms. Since we've got this extra distance to go between the body and the, uh, the body and the gate, we have this additional depletion region. The capacitance starts to decrease. And we said that at some voltage, we don't know exactly what that voltage is, uh, but at some voltage when the depletion region is at its maximum size, so when the surface potential is equal to two times phi F, or in this case phi F P because it's a P type substrate, um, or when X D, the depletion region is at its maximum. Um, and that's that's just an artifact of uh, normally, depletion regions don't have maximum widths, but that's just a uh, uh, some a weird characteristic of what happens when we apply an increase in gate voltage. 
Uh, and if if you're a little confused as to why this happens, I suggest you uh, watch the watch the videos on the MOSFET band diagram and try to really understand that. Uh, but that's that's kind of where that comes from. And so the capacitance is going to decrease, decrease until it gets to some minimum value, and that's determined by this maximum value of this depletion width. And then we said that it's going to start increasing again. And at a certain voltage, that's the threshold voltage, so when Vg is equal to Vt, our capacitance is going to be equal to Cox again. And why is that? Um, well, we still have this depletion region here, so I guess I shouldn't have erased it, but I'm going to erase these holes and this, this length so that everything is a little less messy. Uh, but remember, if we still have this depletion region here, and we apply a gate voltage, so we apply VG, instead of minus one volt, we apply a gate voltage of VT, so the threshold voltage, whatever that is, then we're also going to attract negatively charged electrons, so electrons that are free to move around in addition to these positively charged ions. And that additional charge is going to induce a positive charge on the metal. And so we have mobile charge carriers separated by mobile charge carriers, and the distance of separation is just Tox. So we go back to the original situation of having our capacitance, CGB per unit area, equal to Cox. There's only one subtlety here, and that's the reason that I drew back in these, this source and this drain. And that's that these electrons, um, these electrons, are not just free to move in and out of the body. So these electrons form this continuous channel of electrons that continues into the drain and the source. So there's actually no capacitance between the gate and the body in this situation. So CGB is actually equal to zero. Um, the capacitance here is actually between the gate and the source regions or the gate and the drain regions, because these electrons can move around freely from the source to the drain, but they can't just go back into the, to the body. Or rather they can, but there's a very large VG, there's a very strong electric field. Um, there's a very strong electric field that wants to keep these electrons very close to the surface. So they tend not to move back into the body. And so that's uh, that's all of gate capacitance. So uh, you now understand how the capacitance varies between the gate and the other terminals as a function of the applied gate voltage. Um, in the future, we'll talk about how we actually take this voltage. Uh, so this this or sorry, this capacitance, this gate capacitance, and split it up into capacitance between the gate and the source and capacitance between the gate and the drain. Because this is gonna be, this is gonna turn out to be much more useful from a circuit's perspective than a capacitance between the gate and the body. And I should also mention that typically, um, typically uh, we operate this MOSFET, so we operate this MOSFET, this MOSFET, with VG greater than VT. Uh, so in that case, the capacitance between the gate and the body is equal to zero, and CGS and CGD uh, are what accounts for this gate capacitance. So the capacitance gets effectively split half and half uh, between CGS and CGD. But that's a little more, little more subtlety uh, about what's to come. Um, in in future videos on when we talk about how to actually use this gate capacitance in a circuit, but this is where it comes from. Uh, the gate capacitance, all it all it depends on is the state of this channel. So the reason we call it the gate capacitance is because the gate um, or this this channel has different capacitances depending on the voltage that we apply to the gate. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you all next time. Thanks.